And hello everybody and welcome to the wonderful world of ERDs. This is a long slide series so I will try to break it down in half. Okay, the idea is how to map an entity relation diagram to relations in the database. Okay, objective and topics, basically the same idea. Okay, here's your overall process. Okay, a regular entity type in the ERD is a something that's basically you don't have it where it's true sometimes, it's true all the time. Okay, so if you have an employee that would rough, that would trust or uh, roughly translate into an employee table and you would have these as your fields or your columns. Now you wouldn't actually have a field called imp, uh, imp name. You would go ahead and break that down in first name, middle initials, and last name. And trust me, you want to do that. Every database I saw where they didn't do that, they ended up having to do that. Okay, and what we have here is you have an imp number, employee number, which is underlined. This is the number you give the employee and that way you know that number is correct because that's the one you give them. Now this NID, this is a national identification uh, number. This is in the US would be the social security number. So you don't want to necessarily use that as your index because uh, they can say hey you got the wrong uh, social security number for me and if you got this linked to 20 other tables it could be a nightmare to change it. Okay, over here you have department. You have this thing called a department, this object called a department. Here's your attributes. Now, you notice department has a relation to employees. We'll get to that later, but anyway, what we're doing now is we're describing what makes a department and what makes an employee. Okay, and here's an annotation we do for this. Okay, and there's a little hesitation here because we don't say want to say employee name. We want to say employee first name, middle initials, last name. By the way, put a lot of spaces in all of those because it's amazing how long the names are these days. Okay, employee employee number is your primary key. Department uh, department number is your primary key. You know that's right because you know that's the number you assign to it. Department name they may very well change that. And if you use that as a key, you're kind of stuck with going and changing that in all the tables. You're using that as a foreign key. All right, I, they're indicating that this um, department location, that, that needs to be a separate table. And what happens, you have a foreign key, not null to that to department number. That way, every department location is associated with a department. That way, if you've got to go find the department, you've got to know where to look. Okay, entity weak entity. Sometimes you have a relations there. Sometimes you don't. Uh, show you an example. Not every employee has uh, dependents, but all dependents have employees. And what happens is your dependent. There you have the dependent name. Get and the way that you relate the dependent back is you have a foreign key for employee number in this table that relates back to this. Now looking at this I'm not sure what happens. We talk about employees that are ma uh, married to each other. I really don't know what they do in that case. That's kind of interesting isn't it? And I will tell you in general with people tables, with people databases, people will find a way to break just about any business rule you want to set. Okay, binary relationships. Okay, degree and the cardinalities. Uh, binary, it means there's between two, one to many, many one, one to one. We'll go through those and show you. Okay, and the best way to show you this is bat map a binary one to many relationship. Uh, for example, this would be like a um, this would be like a department and employees. A uh, department has a bunch of employees. Every employee is generally assigned to one apartment. Okay, and here we have department and we have project. And the idea is, is that 
you know, using good project management, every project has one department that controls it. Otherwise, you have a fight. So what happens is that you have a project down here, you have a department here. Well, you probably tell what's going to happen is that we'll add a field here that will put the department number as a foreign key to make sure that it relates back. And it also should be not known because every project needs somebody uh, needs somebody to be in charge of it. Otherwise, they don't get done. Okay, and this is a one-to-many relationship. Okay, every deploy works is or assigned to one and only one department. It looks like here. And what happens is that since many employees are assigned to one department, you want to put the foreign key in the employees. For a um, uh, one-to-many relationship, the foreign key goes, uh, the at field goes on the many side. That's what they're telling you in that verbiage a couple slides ago. Okay, and to make sense, it's got to make sure it's not null. Binary many-to-many -many relationships. Uh, sometimes... You have something where you can have, like, uh, for example, many uh, students can take many courses. Some of them take a lot of courses. Some of them don't. And many uh, courses can have more than one student. When you do that, you have to do, I used to call it a pivot table. There's probably a fancy name for it. But there, you basically separate out a table, and you use that to resolve this. Okay, and here we go. Employees may work on many projects, and many uh, projects have many employees associated with them. So you have this, you model this, this assignment, uh, if you will, uh, and you use it to link up employee number and project number. And you add hours on how many hours they work on it. So what happens, basically you create another table and you that use that table to link to both of these because project, this is a one-to-many uh, this is a one -to -many relationship, this is a one-to-many relationship, but in between it turns out to be a many-to-many -many relationship. And you use it to pull up how many employees are working on one project or how many, how, how many projects one employee has. Okay, there's a foreign key, and there's a foreign key, and it's got to be not null. Okay, one-to-one -one relationships. And let's see what they're talking about. Okay, all the employees that are assigned to the department, one lucky person gets to be the manager in this model. And what happens is you add a foreign key for that uh, for, for the manager. Now, and generally, there will only be one manager in charge of a department, and a depa uh, manager certainly doesn't want to be in charge of more than one department. You don't need more than one manager in the department. You don't need more, a manager managing more than one department. So this is a one-to-one -one relationship. Okay, and... Start date may be when, this, uh, when uh, the manager starts there. Uh, you can also, if you can like, you, uh, like you can start that out into a manager table, but here's how you do it with uh, the minimum number of tables. Okay, you got a foreign key and a not null here because every department's got to have a boss. Okay, associative entities. Okay, what happens? You got uh, employees that take courses. They have this thing called a certificate that associates the employee with the course, and you just simply match it up because employees can take several courses. Uh, one course could have several employees at a time, and this is basically like students and courses. And what happens is your primary key for your certificate is your certificate number, but it contains a foreign key to employee number and course ID because you don't want any certificate that an employee doesn't take, and you don't want any instance, you know, if, a, if there's a t certificate, it should have a name on it, and that's the n employee's name, and it should specify a course.
Okay, and you'd want to assign a, a index that you can control that way people can't say, oh no, you got the wrong employee in the wrong course. And you might want to say what time they completed it. Hey, at this point, I will stop the recording and we will take it up with the rest of it.